Good evening, teacher. Hi, eh, good evening, Reina. Ya casi estoy llegando a mi casa, así que voy a enseñar la, la cámara cuando yo. Ok, ok. Okay, let's turn on the camera, guys. Remember, if you can, please. We're about to start in a few minutes. I'm just making some time. Right now we are eight and as a requirement, I'm gonna do the attendance right on time today. Okay, with the ones that are present. So let's do it. Alexa Marcela Cibrian de Montenegro. Arely Isabel Campos Hernández. Dalila Abigail Hernández Meléndez. Daisy Carolina Angulo de Sánchez. Edwin Esaú Galdames Calderón. Good evening. Good evening. Elizabeth del Carmen Vázquez Pérez. Erling Melquisedec Castro Cortés. Henry Giovanni Rivas Rivera. Hello, Henry. Irma Noemí de Jesús Martínez. Jennifer Beatriz Mejía Cepeda. Jill Livón Mejíbar de Castellanos. Juan Eduardo Flores Aguilar. Catherine Beatriz Reine, Reyes Ventura. María Epifania Castro. Present teacher. Thank you. Marta Marisol Castillo Valladares. Present teacher. Yeah. Oscar Humberto Argueta. There he is. Reina Elizabeth García Alfaro. Present. Thank you. Silvia Evelyn Romero Bautista. Sonia Esmeralda Mauricio Orellana. And Úrsula Esteli Gómez Martínez. Present, teacher. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Thank you for joining me, guys, tonight. Did you uh, find out more idioms, more common idioms? Yes. Okay. Which ones did you find? Thank you, Oscar. Okay, I got one for you. A blessing in disguise. 
a blessing in disguise. Just the way it sounds, a good thing that seemed bad at first, but it was good. For example, um, working from home. Working from home has been, for me, a blessing in disguise. Because, you know, it sounded like, oh, no, right? The internet is not good. Uh, in Mexicanos, too many power outages, too much electricity short, short shortages. And in reality, it's been awesome. It's been awesome working from home. Now, next one, beat around, beat around the bush, beat around the bush. Hey, hey, Ursula, shh, 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 shh. beat around the bush, beat around the bush. Beat around the bush. It means to avoid saying what you mean, usually because it is uncomfortable. Es, es mejor que no diga lo que va a decir porque puede ser incómodo para alguien, es como andate, andate por los arbustos ok Polite. ajá andate por los arbustos, es como shh. no menciones no menciones eso porque no, diga, no digas eso porque uh -huh. Jennifer se puede molestar o algo sí. right, so beat around the bushes beat around the bush ok yeah. I have one. Uh huh. Once in a blue moon. Hey, once in a blue moon. Yeah. Can you use it in a sentence? Uh, yes. Um. I. Remember to call your remember to call your parents from your study abroad trip once in a blue moon. Mm -hmm. When I was studying abroad, I used to call my parents once in a blue moon. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is something that happens rattly. I mean it rattly happens. It's fair. Anybody else? Very Spanish. Better late than never. Better see, late than never. I have, I, I have a see, uh -huh. I, see eye to eye. Can you type it? Okay, right now. Daisy, good evening. Better late than never. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Welcome. Better late than never. See eye to eye. See eye to eye. How will you use it? Um, oh. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. This is to agree with something. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. To have the same point of view. To yeah. have the same point of view. Um, for example, um, I, I try with you. I see, I see, oh, I see, I see. I, I try with you. Mm. 
Maybe. I don't the, know. The, the, but usually you use it with um, both subjects first, like the teacher and I see eye to eye. Okay. My daughter and I see eye to eye. Mm. All the time. All the time we see eye to eye. Okay. That's a good one. Somebody else, come on, Edwin, Jennifer. Catherine. Arthur, Reina, Henry, Elizabeth, Daisy. Now, I have no students. Everybody's with their camera off. Oh, my God. Okay. There's a lot of idioms you can use. Um, there's actually a website that I like, an article about idioms that can help you. With the town? The type it, type yeah, it. With the town. With the town. Hey, this is a good one actually as well. Like father, like son. Okay. Hit the town. Hit the town is like, okay. Right? That that's uh oh, this is um uh, how do you call this thing? Um an imperative. It's an imperative. And you you can just use it, you know, like to give an order to someone. Hey, hit the town. Right? Am I right, Ursula? Mm, I found I found the uh, go out to have fun. Oh, okay. I was wrong. Hit the okay. town. For example, let's ah. hit the town tonight. Yeah, it's an imperative too. Okay, let's hit the town. Hit the town today, tonight. Let's hit the town tonight. I've heard about it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Come on, English is not is not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Come on, it's not rocking, rocket science. Cutting corners. It's like when you go with your family to the restaurant and the kids want to order everything in the menu and you go like, oh, do you know what? Let's reduce, you know, you can eat this and that and the baby can eat this and that. And then somebody tells you, hey, you're just cutting corners, cutting corners. Está reduciendo por dinero o tiempo, lo que sea. Puede aplicarse con tiempo también. You know what? I'm going to do this job really quick. I need to cut corners. I need to cut corners. Okay? It's like to reduce. To have bigger fish to fry. To have a bigger, a bigger fish to fry. What's the meaning? I think that's very logical. Uh, yes, I have other uh, problems, bigger problems. Bigger problems, right? I have bigger problems to attend. To attend. <laughs> oh my God. We saw hanging there yesterday. Hey, <laughs> this is very useful. I love this one. Hit the sack. Let someone off the hook. Uh huh, Jennifer, what's the meaning? Let someone off the hook. Uh, 
aprendí que es como, como no, como más o menos como no responsabilizar a alguien, algo así. Mm, no responsabilizar a alguien. Como dejarlo sin responsabilidad, como dejarlo fuera. ¿verdad? So, let him off the hook. That will be the use. Because instead of someone, you use him or her. Right? Leave him off the hook. Leave him off the hook. Let him off the hook. Let him off. Let him off. Let him, let him off the hook. Let her off the hook. Let her off the hook. Okay. Hey, come on. I'm going to tell you this tonight. When you finish the class, I'm going to help. I'm going to tell you, hey, let's hit the sack. Let's hit the sack. Come on, let's hit the sack. Vamos a dormir. Let's hit the sack. Go to go to bed. Go to sleep. Let the cat out of the bag. I heard that before. What's the meaning of let the cat of the bag? Out of the bag. Let the cat out of the bag. It's um, to, to say a secret. To say, say a, a secret. secret. Oh, to reveal, to reveal a secret. Reveal re re secret, yeah. I like this one, hey. you know? Uh, for example, lay a hey, who let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, reveló el secreto. Uh huh. Okay, I like this one. It's very common as well. No pain, no gain. This applies for you right now. No pain, no gain. Hey, Daisy, you're on the ball. You're on the ball. Great job. You are on the ball. You're on the ball. Estás en lo correcto. Estás haciendo un buen trabajo. You're on the ball. Now, when, when, when my son, Xavier, speaks about a problem at school, um, it's very funny, but it's true. He is difficult for him. It's difficult for him to make us a long story short. Make a long story short. It's difficult for him to make a long story short. And this is something you can use as a common phrase. You know, when I was born, um, da -da 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 -da, long story short, I was born. Long story short. Eso es como en buen español, en pocas palabras, en resumidas cuentas. Okay. Long story short. Da -da -da. Miss the boat. <laughs> What's the meaning, Jennifer? Too late. Too late. Oh, man, I'm sorry. You missed the boat. <laughs> That's a good one. You missed the boat. Okay. I'm just pulling your leg. Pulling your leg? To pull someone's leg. Come on, don't get upset. I'm just pulling I'm I'm just pulling your leg. I'm just pulling your leg. Why is this together? Uh, oh I, I see. Some one's leg. There you go. To pull someone's leg. I'm just pulling your leg. This I love. Instead of saying calm down, relax, you can say pull yourself together come on pull yourself together pull yourself together calm down calm down and when someone's just show up you know let's say we were talking about ursula and she shows up and we say oh speaking of the devil Hablando del diablo. This is very common in Spanish too, right? How how do you say this in Spanish? Speaking of the devil. Hablando del diablo. Sí, es lo mismo en español. Okay. 
Oh, no, usualmente le decimos a la persona, Chis, no te vas a morir pronto. <risa> It's in good Salvadorian, I guess. So there's a whole list. I just send you a website with very common English idioms and expressions. Uh, uh, there are some. Hey, hey. You can judge a book by its cover. You can't judge a book by its cover. That's true. You can't judge. A book by its cover. You can judge a book by its cover. Never judge a book by its cover. Never judge a book by its cover. Okay. You can judge a book by its cover. And there are some um, expressions as well uh, on the on the website that I just sent you a list. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. A penny saved is a penny earned and so on. Oh, this is very common as well. A perfect storm. A perfect storm is not something positive. It's the negative. It's the negative. It's like the worst possible situation. The worst that could happen is happening right now. Right now we're in the perfect storm, you know. Um, we're going through difficult times. It's very difficult right now. It's a perfect storm. Okay, let me try something really quick. Let me go to Juglinch. Just a minute. Okay, let's do something. Vamos a hacer algo para estudiar esto en contexto de una manera entretenida. Sorry. Bien, vamos a hacer algo. Le voy a enviar el link de juglish.com a su WhatsApp. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Algo bien fácil. Necesito que me busquen dos oraciones comprendiendo el contexto del idioma. ¿Cómo lo vamos a hacer? Bien, nos metemos ahí a Juglish y seleccionan el acento US. Al llegar ahí, lo único que necesito que hagas es del link que te envié primero, copiar un idiom y pegarlo en Juglish. Te van a empezar a salir videos. Y el momento exacto en el que alguien ocupa ese idiom. Si no encontrás, si alguno te dice que no hay videos con ese idiom, busca otro idiom. Búscame dos y entenderlo en el contexto de lo que están diciendo. Solo copiarlo y pegarlo en algún lado o escribirlo en tu cuaderno, ¿ok? Solo dos idioms en contexto. Preguntas? Eso dice en español para que lo hagamos rapín. Questions? No? Ok, bien, hagámoslo. Ahí están los links ya en su WhatsApp.
Uh, les pongo un ejemplo de lo que espero acá en el chat de Zoom. Por ejemplo, I'm getting my cultural experience, but I'm getting the best of world, both worlds. But I'm getting the best of both worlds. That's an example. Hey, that's a good one. Don't cry over spill milk. Do something at the drop of the hat. To wrap your head around something. Okay, so I hope you found one at least. It shouldn't be that difficult. I, ne I never thought about this. Vamos a hacer esto de nuevo esta noche ya con los phrasal verbs. Tonight, we have to talk about phrasal verbs. And we'll do that in a minute. So, can someone give me an example of what you found? ¿Alguien me puede dar un ejemplo de lo que encontró? Better late than ever. How? Better late than never. I'd say that it's really better late than never and that at the end of the day, we do. Okay. But we are where we are and better late than never. Um, I passed away in 1952. So better late than never. Uh, Okay. Which I thought 
better late than never. So this, this idiom is just at the end of a sentence, right? To finish, to conclude a, a, an idea sometimes, okay? This is one of those better late than never moments in life. Okay. Como cuando un gobierno va a salir de turno y hacen una obra a último minuto, right? Better late than never. Más vale tarde que nunca. All right. That's very common. Anybody else? Another example from Yuglish? Hello. Okay. Uh, it's hard to wrap your head around. Oh, I sent that. <laughs> the one I sent, it's hard to wrap your head around something like that. And so if, if it happens, if it happens in a situation, and so if it happens in a situation, it's hard to wrap your head around something means, uh, I'm sorry, to wrap your head around something. That's the idiom, to wrap your head around something. It's like, becoming blind you know don't don't pay attention to the problem when it's a difficult situation it's difficult it's hard to to wrap your head around something don't pay attention to that situation this is not easy okay alguien más tiene un ejemplo que he encontrado en english no okay come on guys let's start the class then with uh today's topic i mean I already started the class, so let's start today's topic, which is simply phrasal verbs. Okay, let's put them in context first. Who is the person who fixes damaged equipment in your job? <laughs> who is the person who fixes damaged equipment in your job? You know that person? The mechanic. The mechanic. Okay. You know, my wife uh, works at a company that produces um, women clothes, underwear, women underwear. She has worked. She has worked there for 23, almost 23 years. Yeah, about 23 years. She has been working there. And there's a production line. I worked there too. I was an employee of that company a long time ago. And there is where I met her. There is a production line. And there's always a mechanic on the production floor. Because of the machines, right? If a machine goes bad, then we have the mechanic to fix it, to repair it really quick. Of course, he's a specialized mechanic on sewing machines. Is there any piece of equipment you have trouble with? Have you ever, have you ever had a problem with any piece of equipment? I have a problem with the hard disk of my computer. Oh, really? With the hard drive, the hard disk of your computer. What happened? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the problem. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that uh, is it stop working. It stopped. It stopped working. Really? Working and the the computer that then do that do anything. So what did you do? I report the computer of 
far IT department and they uh, fix the problem. They fix the problem. Did they repair the problem or did they fix the problem? Um, I think they replace the. So they repair it. They repair the computer. Yeah. Okay. There is a difference between fix and repair. Okay. okay. Do you want to know? Okay. okay. Fix. Let's say that the host, let's say that the host of the alternator of the car, the host of the alternator is leaking. Is leaking. Okay. ¿Entienden esas tres palabras? Host. No. For water, no, manguera. Okay. Um, is I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It's a radiator, not alternator. Okay, the hose for the radiator is leaking. Okay, it is leaking. So in other words, there is a leak of water, you know, there's a leak of water. So <laughs> it's so common to make that mistake, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's leaking, okay? There's a leak. So I am um, to fix it, to fix it, what I do is I I have a gum on my head, on my mouth. Okay, I have a gum on my mouth and I just take the gum out of my mouth and put it on the hole and I put it on the hole. That is to fix the problem. I just fix the problem. When I get home, I repair, I use another part to repair the problem, to replace the hose. Okay, I just replace the hose because the hose is the problem. So the hose is the problem. So I use another part to replace the hose and that's it. <laughs> A ver, ¿me entendieron? Ursula, ¿me entendió? Yes, yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I, I understood. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Ustedes se acuerdan, con, bueno, cuando yo estaba pequeño, tengo un recuerdo bien raro, varios recuerdos raros. Dos personas que pasaban siempre en el pasaje en Santa Ana vendiendo. Una señora que pasaba vendiendo pan dulce, que era bien en chele, la señora ya estaba mayor, era gordita, pero vendía un pan tan rico, un pan dulce, en las tardes. Y el segundo recuerdo es del señor que vendía, pasaba arreglando, reparando ollas. <laughs> ¿Se acuerdan? Yo ocupaba huevo para reparar las ollas. I was like, how, how, does, how does he do that, right? I mean, nunca entendí cómo hacía esta cosa realmente para reparar una, una olla con huevo. It's really weird. Ok. Ojo, vocabulary. Ok, so. You will have problems with equipment all the time. So let's go with the conversation again. Let me read this for you so you can practice with your classmates, okay? Let me do the same as usual. Let me spotlight myself and... So here goes the conversation. Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need to tighten up this screw. I need to tighten up the screw. Sure. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Thanks a lot. Look, did Kit clean up the room before he left? Did Kit clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I know. 
he did because I asked him to switch off the power. Great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? Did you call up the electrician? The engine, the engine doesn't stop to turn off. And now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't oil it regularly, I it will size up eventually. That's correct. One more time. Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need to tighten up the screw. Sure, here you go. Thanks a lot. Look, did Kit clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch off the power. Great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn off, and now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't oil it regularly, it will size up eventually. That's correct. Okay. So let's do two volunteers first, and then we get split it to practice just for a moment. Thank you, Jennifer. Who's going to practice with Jennifer? Jill. Jill, Jill excellent. Yeah. One, two, three, go. Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me the spinner, please? I need to tighten up this screw. Sure. Here, here you go. Thanks a lot. Look, did Kit clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know I did. He did because I asked him to switch up the power. Great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn off, and now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't oil it regularly, it will say up eventually. That's correct. Excellent. Okay, tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten Here you go. Up. Here you go. 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 Okay. Next, go. um, power. 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 No se queden con lo que yo les enseño, búsquenlo. <laughs> <laughs> y les recomiendo que lo busquen en, en canciones. A ver, una canción que diga Power. Chill. <laughs> ten. Ten, ten, ten. The power of love. Ah, the power of love. Okay. <laughs> I got the power. Okay. Power. Um, the engine. 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 And how do you say ingeniero in English? Engineer. Excellent. Engineer. El estrés está en la primera sílaba. Muy bien, Jennifer. Engineer. Okay, I think that if... Engineer. I think that if... That if... That if... I, I think that if... That if I you don't... If now, you let's, don't. Join, let's join sounds. I think that if you don't oil it... I think that if you don't oil it... I think that if that if you you don't oil it you don't oil it perfect I think that if you don't oil it regularly I think <laughs> I think that if you don't oil it regu regu regularly regularly Reg it's Reg difficult. <laughs> regularly. Regularly. Okay. Uh -huh. Regularly. Okay. It'll. I think, it'll. Uh -huh. I Go think ahead. that if you don't oil it regularly. Okay. Mm. Now, an American will say it'll. It'll size up eventually. <laughs> it'll size up eventually. It'll. It'll. It'll size up regularly. I mean, it all size up eventually. Uh, los americanos le suelen, o los que yo he escuchado mucho de ellos, es que suelen contractuar mucho el futuro con Will. 
Eso no se los enseñé aquel día que estábamos hablando. No, no hablamos de Will, de hecho, la estructura, para los que no la han visto. Sí, eh, bueno, es muy similar, ¿no? Siempre el sujeto, el auxiliar, el verbo en su forma base. Sí, así como en ese ejemplo. It will size up eventually. Y luego el complemento, ¿no? It'll, ahora, la forma de contractorlo es el sujeto, el apóstrofe y las dobles L's, ¿no? So, I'll, you'll, he'll, she'll, siempre se te va a enrollar la lengua. She'll, it'll, it'll. It'll. Eso suena a Italy, 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 it'll. Ok. And so on. They'll, you'll, you'll. Ok. Todo eso es práctica, recuerden. Y eso es lo que vamos a hacer ahorita. Vamos a practicar unos 15 minutos a lo mucho. Luego los traigo y empezamos a probar a ver cómo andamos con nuestra pronunciación. Luego vamos a pasar a ver la gramática de que envuelve los phrasal verbs. Ok. Acuérdense. Hay de aprovechar el tiempo y repetir, repetir, repetir. Hasta el agotamiento. Ok. Solo así se puede mejorar una buena pronunciación. So let's try it. Y si tú ya captaste la pronunciación y sientes que esto es un poco aburrido, ayúdale a tus compañeros. Y los demás, déjense dar feedback. Permítanse corre ser corregidos, ¿ok? Which is good. It's good. Let me split you in small groups and please accept the invitation. Let's go. Ali, Ali, Henry, please join your groups. Solo um, les estoy buscando la conversación para compartir. Deme un segundito. Okay. Vaya. Listo. Ahí estamos. Okay. 